Chapter 13, Regulation of Gene Expression. Um, this is part of the uh, molecular biology part of AP Bio, and um, this will lead us into a little bit on biotechnology then. So three sections. 13.1 um, deals with the prokaryotic regulation. 13.2 uh, is eukaryotic gene regulation. And then 13.3, um, you have heard of before. We'll go into it a uh, slightly more detail on uh, gene mutations. Um, there's the connection to the chapter. You can read that at the beginning of chapter 13 itself. Um, and also uh, check out this slide. So in 13.1, uh, prokaryotic regulation. Uh, prokaryotes are bacteria, and they do not require the same enzymes all the time. And so what we see is that enzymes are going to be produced as they are needed by that bacteria cell. Um, this idea uh, was pr proposed by uh, two scientists, Jacob and Manad, in 1961, and they proposed this idea of an operon. Um, basically, an operon model is used to explain the regulation of gene expression in prokaryotes. Uh, an operon itself is a group of structural and regulatory genes that function as a single unit. So if we look at the uh, operon, um, basically it consists of three components, uh, and then there is a, a fourth component there, but when you look at the DNA itself, um, the DNA consists of a promoter, an operator, and a structural genes. And when you look at the operon, it, the name of it essentially means uh, to operate. So what you see there is in the DNA, there is a sequence where RNA first attaches. That would be the promoter region. Um, then there is the operator. Um, the operator is the DNA sequence where you're going to have an active repressor bind. So the, the part that you don't see here, sometimes people talk about a fourth part of this called the, the repressor itself. Um, but the repressor will bind, the, bind this operator region and ultimately that operator region will either allow or not allow RNA polymerase to travel down um, the next segment of DNA, which would be the, the genes. Um, the structural genes themselves, they're going to code for uh, one to several genes coding for enzymes of a particular metabolic pathway. Um, this, of course, would be transcription, uh, where they'll be transcribed simultaneously as a, as a block. Um, so the, the promoter and the operator uh, are short segments of DNA. Um, you have a region of the DNA that's going to promote you have a small segment that the repressor will either bind to to uh, either allow or inhibit RNA polymerase to uh, transcribe um, that DNA molecule into messenger RNA. And if it does permit RNA polymerase to continue to move down the DNA strand, it will then hit upon those structural genes. Um, the structural genes um, would then code for the amino acid sequence in messenger RNA so we'll code for those uh, codons that are needed to make uh, a protein. So a regulatory gene is one that codes for a repressor protein that controls the uh, operon itself. Um, regulatory gene is normally located outside the operon. Um, the repressor protein controls whether operon is active or not active. So basically it's going to turn the gene on and off. Um, one of the first uh, to look at here in prokaryotic gene regulation is the TRIP operon. Um, TRIP operon is uh, the um, basically looking at the tryptophan, which is an amino acid. Uh, we do get out of that out of some foods. Um, such as poultry, uh, you do get that out of uh, milk, um, dairy product. So uh, basically the TRIP operon is going to be the regulator that codes for a repressor. Um, if tryptophan, which is that amino acid again, is absent, what will happen is the repressor is unable to attach to the operator and the expression is normally on. So uh, 
what will happen then is RNA polymerase is going to bind to the promoter region and enzymes for the synthesis of tryptophan are going to be produced. So in this case, uh, if tryptophan is, is not available, then um, because the bacteria, uh, uh, such as E. coli, which lives in our gut, needs this, um, it's going to need to turn these genes on to produce more tryptophan. Um, once tryptophan becomes present, um, what we see then is it's going to combine with the repressor protein as, it, uh, as its co-repressor. Um, basically, the repressor becomes functional when bound to tryptophan, and the repressor then will block the synthesis of enzymes in the pathway for tryptophan synthesis. So here you can see that um, the trip operon um, in this region here, we have the regula uh, uh, regulator gene. Here's the promoter, and here will be the operator. So um, these are the uh, structural genes themselves. So this will uh, control for the active repressor. Um, the active repressor, uh, when the repressor binds to that operator, uh, basically uh, transcription is pre uh, prevented there. So this would be the region here where if you see my arrow, um, that is going to promote where transcription should take place. So RNA polymerase would bind here, but if blocked, it can't go then down and read those genes. So we have the two scenarios here. In the first one, we have tryptophan being absent. So what we see here is uh, basically um, the regulator gene is going to be transcribed in the messenger RNA and then we're going to produce that inactive repressor. Um, the inactive repressor will then um, uh, not be able because its uh, conformation or shape has changed. It will not be able to bind to the operator. And because tryptophan is absent, then the enzymes will be able to be read to produce tryptophan. So RNA polymerase will be able to pass over the operator and then travel down the DNA segment that will code for um, the enzymes needed to make tryptophan. So here you can see that messenger RNA sequence and then the enzymes that will be produced for that process. Um, then once we start to synthesize tryptophan or the bacteria cell starts to trip the, uh, the, uh, makes tryptophan in the cell, what will happen is uh, the tryptophan would eventually then um, come and find its way and bind to the inactive repressor and ultimately change its conformational structure then. So you could see that there where the um, inactive repressor will now become an active repressor and inhibit RNA polymerase um, to bind to the promoter region. Um, and because that happens then, um, it's being inhibited. So RNA polymerase will not be able to go down and transcribe those genes to make the enzymes for making tryptophan itself. So uh, that is one example. Um, there is also the LAC operon. Um, the LAC operon, uh, it's a regulator that codes for a repressor. Um, if lactose, and you know lactose is a disaccharide made of, of glucose and galactose, um, the sugar that can be used for food, is absent. Um, so E. coli, uh, basically what we see here, if lactose is absent, the repressor attaches to the operator and the expression would uh, normally be turned off then. But if we see lactose becoming present, um, basically what will happen then is it's going to combine with the repressor and renders it unable to bind with the operator. And then RNA polymerase is going to be able to bind the promoter region and then produce the three enzymes that are necessary for lactose catabolism. Um, so basically what we're doing there is producing the enzymes that are responsible for helping to hydrolyze um, lactose into their monosaccharide subunits. And we see that here in the diagram. So here we have the regulatory gene that's going to uh, code for the active repressor. Um, here we have RNA polymerase. So uh, in the absence of, of lactose, um, we have that uh, repressor that is going to bind to the operator region 
and RNA polymerase will not be able to bind to promoter region and then produce those lactose metabolizing genes. But when lactose becomes available in the bacteria cell, um, what we see is lactose will then bind to the active repressor and cause it um, to be inactivated. And when it's inactivated then, um, that gene will be turned on and ultimately what will happen then is it won't be able to fit in there. So by turning the gene on, RNA polymerase is able to bind to the promoter region and ultimately um, travel down the genes, the structural units there, to produce the enzymes needed to break down lactose in the cell. So prokaryotic regulation, uh, to kind of bring this to a halt then, um, further control of the lac operon um, is seen. Uh, e. coli preferentially break down glucose then. Um, the lac operon, operon is uh, maximally activated only in the absence of glucose. So here we see um, uh, a thing called cyclic AMP and, or, or C AMP uh, accumulate. So when glucose is absent, um, cyclic or C AMP accumulates and the C AMP then will bind to the catabolite activator protein, or what we would call CAP. And CAP, when bound to C-AMP, binds to the site near the lac promoter. Um, when CAP is bound, RNA polymerase binds better to that promoter region. Um, the structural genes of the lac operon are expressed more efficiently then. Um, prokaryotic regulation, uh, further control of the lac operon um, when glucose is present, there is little C amp in the cell. Um, CAP becomes inactive, and the lac operon is not expressed maximally. Um, so there you can see uh, the uh, further control of those things going on here with uh, the lactose operon. So here you can see if lactose is present, glucose is absent, um, you have those high C amp levels, um, you have that inactive cap. Um, so what will happen then is uh, basically that will bind there and uh, promote that region there. So RNA polymerase binds fully with the promoter to allow for that particular uh, transcription of those genes. All right, so uh, we will look again at uh, eukaryotic gene regulation. It's a little bit more complex. And then we'll go into 13.3, which is mutation. So we will look at this again in class. We'll talk about it. Um, we'll do a simulation activity. And we will uh, discuss some of these things. Um, it, essentially, if you look at this, um, you've heard of this before. 13.2, um, we're going to see it as uh, you're going to learn about a thing called a single transduction pathway. But if you bring this all into perspective, um, what this should remind you of when we see proteins being changed and the production of things that are needed or not needed, um, ultimately what it comes down to is an, an, a basic understanding of gene control and homeostasis. Um, and, and how do we maintain this dynamic homeostatic system? If we're producing too much of something or if we need more of something, um, that would uh, relate to uh, negative feedback loop mechanisms. So we see negative feedback mechanisms maintain dynamic homeostasis um, for, uh, in this sense, uh, lactose and um, tryptophan but essentially occur, occur for many regulating physiological processes. Um, so if we are getting too far away from that set point, as we discussed when we did, um, we looked at temperature control uh, back when we did 
uh, negative feedback loops, um, look at temperature control. If you get too far away from that, that set point or that normal value, a negative feedback loop mechanism will help restore it to its regular value. So that's kind of what we see going on here with these particular genes. So it's a, a, a different way of showing you see an actual mechanism here for uh, negative feedback. All right, well, that's it for today. Um, we will continue on then, and have a great day, everybody.